Okay. Hello, I'm Lisa Bowman and I play Bernie Summerfield and welcome to Audio Heads Podcast. Hello, this is Geeks Assembled Audio Heads and we are doing a first doctor uh, sort of um, audio adventure by Big Finish called Destination Wars and um, it's it's an interesting thing and it's got some different different cast members than you'd be expecting so and it's got a villain that you're not gonna believe oh my gosh um, so let's start off with Texas Tim what did you think of this and opening thoughts and your um and and a hello or whatever hello or whatever i thought it was interesting i thought it was um see big finish has a problem and that they want to continue to make stories for all these different doctors but they've got a situation now where you know unfortunately the the harsh wheels of time turn. We lose so many actors, and they they want to they want to continue to make high quality dramas. And so I think this is just an interesting approach because what they've done is taken the cast of the characters from from uh, the Gatiss movie, what was an adventure in space and time from the 50th anniversary year, and turned it into to a a sort of copy of the original crew. Um, so they're kind of cashing in on the nostalgia of it, aren't they? I mean, in other words. It's almost like, you know, you know how Big Finish is always remaking things with different casts, you know, like, like, like for example, they've done all these H.G. Wells stories with casts that weren't, like, in the original films or whatever. And I'll have to, you'll have to excuse me. All right. Well, we thought we'd get it all sorted. But uh, as, as his bell rings, bell tolls, um, things change. So let's go to beef dad because he's amazing and because um i just wanted his perspective so say hello and give your opening thoughts please hello um yeah the using of cast from uh an adventure in space and time was a bit mm, yes uh, there are things that are good, there are things that are not so good. Um, the girl who played um, Susan is, is very good, actually, because uh, she, uh, vocally she's perfect. Um, it was a good story. It was a good story. The one thing that they have done right, and I mean really, really right, is each episode is about 29 minutes long, the same length as the original television episodes used to be, and each one ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. And, uh, yeah, it's they, they, they've sort of kept to the way it was done then in 1963 and on until later um but yeah it's uh it's the first uh, the the master appears just to spoil it for anyone who's watching listening and who hasn't seen it um, played by, of all people, James Dreyfus, um, who probably did one of the campest parts ever written for a bloke on television in a situation comedy. Um, but he did, he did it rather well. Um, yeah, the inventor, and then you find out that he is actually the master. And, uh, yeah, Ian and Barbara didn't quite do it for me. Um, 
I would say that David Bradley's doctor in this is slightly better than his doctor in the Christmas episode on television. Um, probably because he's been able to concentrate more on the vocal side of it. Um, but even that isn't um, perfect. Uh, but it's, it's believable, should we say. Um, you, you can tell that it's actually not William Hartnell, and it's someone doing William Hartnell. Um, but not quite getting the intonations and the infl in inflections um, exactly right. But it was, I think it was very well directed. Um, as I say, the story, excellent. Um, the natives to destination, the Dalmari. Um, yeah, I like the idea of them. And I like the idea of the the inventors, or as we later find out, he's the master, his mechanical um, people that he basically rules through. Um, yeah, there's... The attempt to steal the TARDIS is quite funny. I'll leave it there. All right. Tim, would you like to finish your opening thoughts for, for this, please? Well, I, w I was kind of getting at Big Finish's dilemma because, you know, they, they went for years having the four doctors that they had available, and they wanted to tell stories with, with earlier doctors that weren't available. So, I mean, they, they came up with different ways of storytelling, like your companion chronicles or your early adventures. And those work to a certain degree to get more stories out there. But, but what, the, what I think they're attempting here is, is entirely new and entirely different. And you can either like it or, or hate it. I mean, I think it's a, at the end of the day, it's one of those things where they're experimenting. Because um, what you have here are four actors basically doing caricatures of the characters in a way, you know, because they're not really playing parts that they played before they're 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 basing their their characterization on the the original group which is an interesting approach i think but like like beef dad just kind of said it doesn't always work i mean you know i think that the susan is very squeaky and very a bit too posh more than caroline ford's performance similarly the, the other ones are hit or miss but I, I think it's better just to go into it thinking that that's what you're getting is a is, is a caricature of a character and just went along for the ride because i think they do a good job of capturing the whole ethos of that time don't they in a way even though it sounds a bit more modern than a first doctor story would sound because like the music and the sound effects sound a bit more 70s and 80s than they do 60s but that's that's neither here nor there uh i think the story also is, is a bit timey-wimey you know more like today's type of writing versus the 60s type of you know bug bug men in space suits or or mysterious planets and stuff like that you had in the original 60s but i mean i think they did a good job of pulling it off but it was an interesting enough story i think um i think everybody knew that was going to be the master before they revealed that so he was at the beginning of episode two or at the end of episode two and excuse me again but you get my point. yep thank you thank you um let's let's move over to lee what did you please say hello and give your opening thoughts kindly hello how are you all today? Is that okay? Have I passed the audition? Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> uh, well, but, um, it's for me, yeah, I agree with Beef Dad. Ideal length of episodes. Cliffhangers, brilliant, yes. That's what we've been missing from New Who for years now. Um, also, um, it's a, a very, it's a slower paced story, and that's what you used to get in the 60s. Was that you, Beef Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, all right. Um, uh, who's ringing? 
Oh, I know. There we go. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've, I've sorted it. Uh, right. Um, there was, yeah, it's a, a slow paced story, and that's what it used to be like in the 1960s, uh, Doctor Who, which I, I quite liked. Um, I agree. The, the performances are hit, very hit and miss. Um, David Bradley's performance of, of the first Doctor, he, his vocal mannerisms are not exactly like what Hartnell used to do. Um, you know, there's no, hmm, hmm, there's none of that. There's no, not. He did the, he did the my boy bit, but he never used to do the all the hums and the art, uh, uh, you know. But um, yeah, good portrayal. But as I say, it is better than the Christmas episode on TV. Uh, uh, the, the gave him more to play with there, and no sexism as well. Um, yeah, um, as as this, it's been said, uh, Ian and Barbara. Yeah, it didn't really. Do it for me. I mean, the guy who played Ian, um, Jamie Glover, his voice is, I mean, Beef Dad will know what I mean, his voice is so like Ray Brooks, who used to do Mr. Ben on the TV. Uh, it's a kids' program in the UK. It's so, I mean, I was listening and I was getting distracted thinking, oh, that's Ray Brooks. <laughs> but um, Jamie Glover, uh, Julian Glover's son, Anna Blair's son. Um, yeah, it's, and James Dreyfus. It, James Dreyfus for me was the best part in in the in this story. He, he played. He just took me by surprise here because his voice was so unlike what it, you usually you usually hear him on TV. It's nothing like that. That is acting. <laughs> he he was playing the master for real then I uh, he was the best part in, the, in this story I, I did like James Dreyfus since the last I hope he returns some other ones against other doctors to be honest over to you Susan all right well um, I enjoyed the story I enjoyed the destination planet I enjoyed the the native population, I enjoyed the, the automated population, I enjoyed the interplay and the war between and the, the master's plan to get uh, technology up to a certain level so that he could do stuff. I liked that idea. I didn't know. I I, I, I kind of thought James Dreyfus was aiming for a bit Delgado, and I kept expecting him to really pull out the stops like David Bradley was doing with with the first Doctor. Um, he the David Bradley really did work hard at that performance. You can tell. Um, I. I disagree with the others. I, I, you know, here we are disagreeing again. But I disagree. I don't think Claudia did did anything near Susan Foreman. She wasn't alien enough. She didn't sound really out outer space as, as much as Carol Ann always sounds outer space. I mean, not not the posh, you know, Chav sort of. Di dichotomy she is got Carol Ann Ford is just you know her performance as Susan is always so strange I just love it and I just you know if they could have pl plunked her in there and little William Russell I know William Russell's been reprising the role of the first doctor actually much like uh, you know uh, Fraser Hines does with Jamie and the the second doctor I love that I think that you know they could plunk those guys in because they're still here and they're still he's retired he uh is he for sure retired he's not been involved in any big finish for a couple of years now at least two or three years oh I guess I'm still catching up I'm sorry I I didn't really realize that Okay, well, perhaps, uh, you know, then we just have to go with Jamie Glover. But, um, you know, Caroline Ford is still there, and she's still outer space. 
Why well, could, I could, could I say something though? Because I think I sure. get where you're coming from, and I, I understand what you're saying, and I think I think that's a valid point. But you still got Caroline around doing doing audios. Why not use her? But I think that's why they went with this group instead to, to differentiate it from the other types of audios they've done for the first Doctor using uh, like Peter Purvis or William Russell to to double the part of the Doctor with Susan or with Maureen O'Brien. Like they've done with these other forms of storytelling. Uh, this is this is supposed to be a sort of like I, I believe a, a sort of uh, a remake sort of thing of the original team kind of where where you know l- like it or lump it I think I think if you'd put Caroline Ford in it would have taken away from it it would have made it a bit more of what the other thing they is they 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 do with their audios I'm not sure if I'm making a lot of sense but you get my point I think I think they wanted to launch this crew and say this is not your daddy's Doctor Who but this is this is a new version of of the old, the original team, you know, and you have to go into it like that. I think if, you, if you're going to compare it to the original cast and crew all the time, then you're going to find yourself disappointed. But I think uh, if you just go along for the ride, you're going to okay. enjoy it. And I think, Brad, I think Bradley's very good. I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't say that I didn't enjoy the show. I didn't enjoy the, the story. I said that, that, um, you know, if, if, if Claudia really wants to do this, you know, this, uh, this Susan Foreman character, who I love. I mean, I got to tell you, I love Susan Foreman. I love, I love the fact that this, this young Gallifreyan, this young alien girl is traveling around the universe, you know, being, being amazing or being, you know, you know, kind of, uh, but, you know, just being, and she's got, such such a cool character you know i just i just want the best for her so claudia should you know in my humble opinion should up her performance in the area of of being outer space being weird being surely surely surely, surely that's up to the directors to tell them how to perform sorry these act these yeah, is, these actors are mostly new to these characters, sort of. Yeah, well, um, I, 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 I know that this is, they're new to these characters. I know that this is the case because they haven't been doing them, like, straight through. They've done them since ni- 2013. But, um, you know, the point is, is that there's a quality of alienness that Susan... I, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna get off S- Susan because I could I could literally go on for two hours about her character, and and um I just want you guys to have the opportunity to say what you know. Let's let's start let let's go a different direction. How about doing your favorite moments, and let's reverse the order. Let's start with Lee. Well, I think I've already said that my my favourite moments are when James Dreyfus is there. Um, His performance as the inventor and the the master is just uh, wonderfully done. And now now is to say you've got uh, Delgado is not the first master in the Who universe now. We've got James Dreyfus. So how many how many more masters are going to come along up to the Delgado version? I, as I say, I think his performance in this is was brilliant. Um, it was uh, as I say, if you ever see James Jeffers on TV, it's totally totally different characters what he usually plays. It's, it's oh, he plays camp characters very well, <laughs> uh, but this one not camp at all. Um, and I do, I'll, uh, hopefully, as I say, let him uh, come back and face some other doctors and some more audios as the master. I think it's, uh, he did it that, For me, those were the best bits for me when he was when he was there, to and fro in with, with Bradley, and especially when he, he um, took the TARDIS and it wouldn't work for him. <laughs> yeah, amazing uh, actor. I love him. Over to you, Susan. All right, how about you, Beef Dad? Your favorite moments in this bit? Well, I quite, I quite enjoyed the bit where the master was talking to Ian and Barbara. 
and basically said that they had been kidnapped by him and that but by the um by the first doctor that they had been kidnapped by him and uh, that they had stockholm syndrome which of course stockholm syndrome wasn't bought no wasn't in use during 1963 or that era um, so Ian and Barbara wouldn't have known what the hell he was talking about. Um, I loved the bit where he tried to steal the TARDIS. That, that was really good. That was really clever. It was very well done. Um, I, yeah, th there was one other little bit of information there that Ian and Barbara still had clothes in the TARDIS from Peking, which was Marco Polo, as we all know. And uh, yeah, um, I remember Marco Polo, brilliant. I loved that, I really didn't. That was my, I think that's got to be my favourite first Doctor story with Marco Polo. It was brilliant. Brilliantly done. Um, <coughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So I would say that those are probably my favourite favourite bits. The other quite good bit was, um, and I think that was down to the direction rather than the actors. Um, was um, when Susan uh, is talking to Rena and trying to convince her that war isn't necessary. Um, that they, uh, basically diplomacy via her grandfather could put an end to all the problems. And that was, that was quite well done. That was quite well done. Um, but as I say, I think that was mostly in, in the writing and the direction um, as you're saying, Susan, a, a little more otherworldly would have been better. Um, she does tend to, um, she does tend to daydream and wander. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I just, she had her moments, I would say, as Susan. She had her moments as Susan. There were moments and I thought to myself, Wow, I can I could just hear her saying that. Um so yeah, it's it was yeah, all around, not not too bad. All right, Tim, what was your favorite bits, please? Well, actually I was gonna counter one of what Lee said, um, you can't really be sure that this is the first master or the or preceding Delgado because we do not see the master's adventures in order. We only see the doctor's adventures in order. So you get my point. They're both time travelers with their own machines. Uh, you're probably right, though, because they recognize him, I believe, from Gallifrey, even though at this point in the show, there's no Gallifrey yet. Uh, there's no other time lords. There's not even a time lord yet. But I mean, uh, uh, the point is, though, that they're both time travelers, so you're not necessarily seeing the master's adventures in any kind of order, just the doctors. Do you agree with that, or do you, do you counter? No, that, that makes, uh, well, that, in my uh, humble opinion, it makes sense. Well, uh, yeah, but as, as you say, though, they, they recognized each other from Gallifrey, so he could be the first one. Could be. As far as favorite bits, it, I think it's just again, it's it's just you enjoy it for what it is. It's 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 me having to go away again. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I liked the the part where Susan is is convincing Rena and the and the the others to to not go to war. That war really isn't necessary. That that using words and using intellect. And, and trying to solve the problem is a better way. I thought that was great. 
Um, and I'm really glad that we're doing these because it is giving me uh, yet another glimpse into my favorite character of all time. So, you know, any any bits with her in it are going to be favorite bits just because, you know, bring bring me more Susan. And I was hoping, that I was so hoping in the 50th uh, that she would be there. And I was so hoping in Twice Upon a Time that she would be there. I thought these are these are perfect opportunities to reclaim her her place in the show, and uh, but I, I loved the Eighth Doctor to go completely off subject. I love the Eighth Doctor, all hands on deck, where she comes back and ends up going back to Gallifrey. And I so, so that was really brilliant. So um yeah, let's uh let's if the, is there any further criticism that we can give, please I'm gonna open up the the floor. Uh just you know are there criticisms or or, well, or, or tidbits of information? The, the only criticism is really is for me is the direction what is given to the actors. However, I, I can't remember who directed this one. Is it Nicholas Briggs or I can't remember? I can't remember who directed it. But um, it, it's up to the director. They must know what they're doing. They want it to feel like the 1960s tip Tardis team. Uh, they know the feel of the show. They know that each and every character, as you say, you just tell the actors to be a bit more off worldly tell David Bradley to, to be a bit more just a little bit more like Hartnell's portrayal um, uh, oh yes 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 yeah yeah it just mm -hmm. just tell him just give him as a director should give him the direction it should be going in um, I know I know I know I know it's a, a reimagination of the 1963 TARDIS team. I agree. I totally, I get that. But at least direct them in the right way. Put, point them in the right direction. Because these actors are, most, are mostly new to the roles. And some of them mostly haven't watched uh, the classic episodes anyway. So, so you just, you know, I, I'm not having to go to the actors, but it is down to the direction, the director, to tell them, no, no, it would have come. It would have been done this way. They've got. They would have said it that way. Yeah, some of the some of the that's, all, that's my only little. Some of the starters and what have you that 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 um, the, the first doctor used to do, um, and the arms, uh, they, they could have been written in there, yep. and so that's down to the writers as well. Yep. And Tim, would you like to finish what you were saying? Well, uh, uh, an obvious comparison uh, to this type of approach to this kind of story is the, the Peter <coughs> Fishing movies, where they recast the entire group, you know, and it, it's a different Doctor Who, and it's, it is crew, and some of them have the same name, you know what I mean? That's, that's the way I kind of look at this, or sort of maybe an unbound kind of approach, as far as Big Finish is concerned. Um, that's that's about all I have to say about it, really. I think it's it's it is what it is. Um, you just go into it like that, and you're probably going to enjoy it because it's a bit of fun, right? So, yeah. Also, also as well, what Beef Dad said about writing all this the little mannerisms into the script. They could have wrote Hartnell's um, getting words wrong into the scripts every now and again, which yeah. I think it'll be. You know, that would have sounded wonderful. He nailed, he nailed Chesterton's well, voice or Chesterton's name every single time. Yeah. Well, yeah. Brad, Bradley's doing more of an impression. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it's, I, know it's a I know it's a reimagining, but if they just added little bits like that, you'd have, you'd have, you'd have smiled and giggled at it. You know what I mean? <laughs> he quite often called him Chatterton. Hmm. Yep. But I think Bradley's doing more of kind of an impression rather than impersonation. In yeah. A way. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it, it, it to me, it's, it, you get, it, you get the gist of what they're doing here. And I, th I think it works to a certain degree. It's never going to match the original cast. If you go, like when you listen to the BBC recordings, for example, Marco Polo, 
with narration. That's 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 a that's a good listen for since that's all you really have. But I mean, it, what you have here is is just a new approach to the old thing. Well, that's all you really have. I remember the original. I, w I watched it as it was broadcast, and it was just amazing. Yeah, it was just amazing. the one thing I will tell you. I, the sandstorm that they did in um, Marco Polo, it was just incredible. It was all filmed in the studio, and they did this sandstorm in the studio, and it was just absolutely brilliant. You could not tell the difference between a sort of like a filmed sandstorm and the television studio. It was just, it was just incredible. It was totally and utterly convincing. That's awesome. That's so. It was. Yeah, the Marco Polo was brilliant, and um, so all right. Well, um, is, if there's nothing else, I'd like to uh, get your guys's uh, final say and score. And if you want to go off on any other tangents, please do at this time. Um, let's start with Tim, because I'd like to get his stuff recorded before if he has to go again um i'll give it a an eight i thought it was a, a good attempt at recapturing a by for, for foregone era of doctor who uh, in a new kind of way i think it again big finish has their eye towards the future they need to if they want to keep, continue to pump out product the way they have been they need to come up with new ideas to tell tell the stories of the older doctors and crews and stuff and um this, I think this was a good attempt. So, yeah, I'll give it an eight. Thank you. And how about you, Lee? Yeah, um, it, I agree. It's a good attempt. First, first outing. Um, I'm going to give it a 7.5. All right. And Jeffrey, please. I would... I would probably, yeah, I think 7.5 is reasonable. Um, the thing you have to remember is that this is the first one that they did. Now, perhaps as time goes on and there are more stories with this crew, um, it may improve. And, of course, if they listen to the criticisms of their audience things may improve you can always hope um but yeah 7.5 yeah well um i'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10 myself because any more susan is deeply appreciated by this fan girl right here and my criticisms aside uh I, I look forward to doing if 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 the group would like to i'd like to do um the second part of the first doctor uh set um if it um i can't it's called like hurricane of white or hurricane of white the white tornado isn't it white tornado or the white hurricane? white cyclone something anyway the great the great white hurricane Great yeah. White Hurricane. Yeah, we just kind of went through one of those here. And um, I'm really glad that we got to do this because of the timeliness of this episode and the, this box set because, wow, here, here we are. David Bradley was just on television, and there was just it, – it's really kismet. And, and I'm really glad that Big Finish – we're able to get this out at the same time and uh it, it, it's all really resonant anyway thank you for listening thank you for watching and thank you for loving big finish like i do and let's gather again in, in a, a couple weeks or or so i'm not sure if it's a fortnight or some other uh time frame but we'll 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 let you know and uh stay tuned to our channel for more fun stuff 
um, join us on our on our public Facebook group. We have a Twitter, Tumblr. Um, we have uh, Instagram. We have uh, we have an empty we have an empty glass. Oh, perhaps rectify that situation. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> okay, and uh, <laughs> and thank you, fellas, for for you know being faithful and coming back and doing these things. It's really fun. All right. See you later. Bye bye.